Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote, and this is an Amperode portable charging station, or as most people would call it, an EVSC. There are a few things that make this EVSC interesting. The first thing is that it is adjustable, although there are some serious caveats around that. While this EVSC supports 90 volts to 250 volts, the current adjustability is only for 24, 32, or 40 amps, which means that you can't use it on 120 volt circuit in the United States, which would require 12 and 16 amp selections, which is really unfortunate and a big miss, I think, on the part of the company that markets and supports it in the, in the United States, which is For Auto Life CA. Because you can't do level one charging with this, it is not going to be an all-rounder travel EVSC, which is the entire point, the purpose, the driver behind getting a portable adjustable EVSC that just does everything. This doesn't do everything. It only really does 240 volt charging. So you're gonna to have to bring a separate level one charger with you if you wanna utilize this as your travel EVSC, which is really unfortunate. I know level one charging sucks and it's a charge of last resort, but I certainly have done that in many situations uh, when I'm out and about with the car. It just makes sense to plug it in if you can at like an Airbnb or wherever. The other thing that makes this interesting is that it has Wi-Fi connectivity. Now that doesn't mean that it connect to your home Wi-Fi. What it does mean is that there's an access point built into this that you can connect to with any Wi-Fi enabled device and control the adjustability and the timer settings and turn the thing on and off from your uh, Wi-Fi enabled device. You will need to be within range of this though, so that's probably only good for about you know 50, 70 feet or whatever, uh, but it, it's better than it not having it. The last thing that I wanna talk about here before we dig into the device itself is that there are a few different safety marker certification things that are written on the box here, and they're also printed on the back of the EVSC. The most interesting one is the CE logo. CE is roughly equivalent to UL, but for Europe or the European Union. I don't know why an EVSC that has a NEMA 1450 plug on it, which is a, a North American electrical plug, would have CE uh, safety certification, but it does. I reached out to For Auto Life CA around the UL certification because they claim that it has UL certification. They sent me the certificate and I'll put some images up around here showing that it passed all the tests and everything. So while the EVSC does not have UL, a UL logo printed on it, I think it's highly likely that it actually is UL certified uh, this was probably just produced before they got the certification. So let's move that to the side and let's have a look at the EVSC itself. Inside of this box, you get some mounting hardware. This is for the charging gun and it has a lip on it or hook on it for the cable, which is pretty nice if you're gonna uh, hang this in a permanent location. It also has a mounting bracket for the EVSC itself, which is fantastic. Uh, not all EVS, portable EVSCs have a mounting bracket, which means that your, your mounting options are pretty limited and you don't really wanna hang all of that weight because these things are heavy. This one I think is about 18 pounds. I'll put the results from the scale up here. All that weight hanging off the, the plug or the, the outlet itself isn't awesome. You get a carrying bag, which is great. You get some bubble wrap that protects things. And then of course you get the EVSC itself. NEMA 1450 plug, if you were gonna use this with a dryer socket, a 30 amp dryer socket, you would need to get an adapter for that, For that, but that's um, not uncommon across most EVSCs. I do wish that because the hardware actually supports 90 volts to 250 volts, that they had done the work to make 12 and 16 amp options available. It would have been trivial for them to do that. That's just it, it, would, it would require almost no effort for them to enable that in this because the hardware actually supports it. But whatever, I digress. On the front, 
We have an LCD panel, which will show information about the charging status and amps and all that other stuff. We have two buttons, one for timer functions, one for current levels. Uh, this can be set here on the device directly by pushing buttons, or you can use the Wi-Fi app for that, or the Wi-Fi connectivity for that. On the back, we do see the CE logo and then the FCC logo. This is where I would have liked to have seen a UL logo, but I'm willing to give them some benefit of the doubt there, given the that I've seen the certificate. Obviously specs, I'll throw an image up here, a more detailed image so you can kind of see all that stuff for yourself. There's a QR code printed here and then a QR code printed on the gun. It's my understanding is that provides easy access to the Wi-Fi access point that is contained within this device. The cabling here is very thick, very heavy. It's very much consistent with what I would expect for something that can do that supports up to 40 amps. There is some verbiage printed on it, which indicates that it is good to 105 Celsius for 600 volts. It is UL listed. And the big wires inside of here are 8WG. The charge gun itself, while not the most ergonomically satisfying from a hand feel kind of thing, it feels very solid, very well made. The button here feels hefty and resilient. It also has a little hole in here so you could use it with a padlock if you want to. There is a cover, a dust cover, water cutter cover, whatever that comes with it, it seals really, really well. So I, very, I would have very little hesitation around leaving this outside as long as this was covered properly because it should keep water and dirt and snow or whatever out of the, um, the important bits in here. Speaking of that, this is IP67 rated, which means you can leave it outside safely in most weather conditions, rain, snow, whatever. Most of these are at least IP66 rated, so, you know, 67 is going to be a little bit better. That's pretty much all there is to this device. Let's go connect it up to the car and see if it works. So, outside, testing the Amperoad EVSC. It's going to, I've had it charging the car for about 30, 40 minutes here. And I'm just going to flip the camera around and we're going to go investigate a couple things. Here we can see that the car is charging, which is perfect. I'm going to walk over to where the EVSC is. If you let it sit for a while, the LCD panel will turn off. You push one of the buttons here. It um, lights up again. It is charging, and it's, you can see it's been charging for about 35 minutes. But there's an interesting thing that shows up on display here, this error KW, or error kilowatts. That is the, uh, what the car is pulling. But we can see here that the current is nearly 40 amps and the voltage, oh wow, that's a lot of voltage. We can see the current here is nearly 40 amps, so the car is going to be pulling around that too. But on a, you know, $360, $460 device, I would expect that to not be there. You can see here the temperature of the device itself, 38C is not anything concerning. Here we can see the mode that the EVSC is operating in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the car charging so we can see what happens when I do that. So you can see the power has fixed itself in that we're currently just pulling very little power or no power here and we've put 6.02 kilowatts in kilowatt hours into the car. So before wrapping up, I'm just gonna throw some thermal images up uh, that I took while I was using the Ampro EVSE. The ambient temperature was around 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius when I took these photos. Uh, I'm just saying that because it's important to understand the context in which they were taken. I didn't see anything concerning there. The, the temperatures of the cabling and the EVSC were very consistent with what I would expect to see in that kind of scenario. The hardest question that I have to answer around this is would I recommend it? And I firmly believe that there are no bad products, only bad prices. And when the pricing fluctuates so dramatically for a product, it makes it really difficult to, to answer that. The SRP for this EVSC is $460. You can find it on Amazon, which is where you would buy it, at $360 or $380 if there's a manufacturer supplied coupon available. That happens quite often. 
but there are definitely times when that's not available. So should we evaluate this as a $460 EVSC or should we evaluate it as a $360 EVSC? And that, that really makes it hard to answer that question. So let's evaluate this as a $460 device first. I think that the lack of level one charging capability from its adjustable EVSC nets really ma makes, it, makes it very difficult to recommend this versus other products, other competing products in the market like a Shell Recharge uh, level one, level two EVSC. They're competing ar around the same price. At $360, this e EVSC becomes a lot more attractive, even though it can't do level one charging. If you just want an adjustable EVC that you can throw on the wall in your garage, that will plug into a NEMA 1450 receptacle and you can set it to do 32 or 40 amp charging. 360 bucks isn't bad at all for this device. If you want to travel with it and want the additional flexibility to charge off of a 30 amp dryer outlet or something like that with an adapter, again, this is not a bad device at $360. You have most of your 240 volt use cases covered, but you're going to have to carry a level one charger with you or forego that option when it comes to charging, which I personally would not. So that, that, that's where I think that it is really murky. If you're looking at this device as an EVSC that does everything, the price almost becomes irrelevant because it doesn't do everything. If you're looking at this as a 240 volt mildly adjustable EVSC at $360, it's that's a reasonable price and I would recommend it. At $460, I think there are better options. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.